So I hope you guys enjoyed that chill little session at my local skate park. It felt so good to be back on skates, aggressive skates even, uh, after a few, almost a few months off of just rain and other stuff going on. Felt good. It felt even better to finally get on these blank skates and just give them a roll. But are these skates going to be my go-to aggressive skates for 2022 like I was hoping they'd be? Well, I'm not sure. Let's find out why, starting with the pros. So for that first pro, these skates are high quality and they have a great warranty. I wouldn't expect anything less than this with uh, Rollerblade. They make some high quality skates and these are some of their higher end skates. So, you know, every piece that's on these skates is just screams durable. Um, they have really high quality parts added to the skates. And then to back that, if you know anything ever goes wrong or breaks on these skates, you know, you got a great warranty with Rollerblade. Um, they call it their mostly everything guarantee or something like that. Uh, it's basically a warranty that just, if something breaks, more, more often than not, they're gonna give you a new skate. Uh, I used this warranty a few years back when I was rolling my old twisters, uh, cracked the heels on them and they just sent me brand new, the next version of the Twister Edges. Uh, I was dumbfounded. So that's pro number one. Pro number two uh, has to be these liners. Um, I really liked these liners. They're super comfortable, very premium or high-end, good, good quality craftsmanship on these. Uh, they're, they're really something that is a great evolution uh, from the old walkable liners that were just heavy and just chunky and clunky. Uh, didn't really like those so much. These things are much closer to say a high-end like Intuition. Uh, not quite there, uh, you know, they're not heat moldable and they don't have that same kind of foam or hug, but these are an amazing liner uh, coming in a stock skate. All right, so for that third pro, um, I have to say these new soul kits are amazing. Uh, right off the bat, they look dope. Uh, I mean, the, if, if you look at them compared to the old solo teams, uh, the old solo teams are those two chunky things that bolted on to either side of your foot and they just kind of looked a little, I don't know. I wasn't really a big fan of that look. Making these connect all the way around your, your boot and just having a nice clean line. Oh man, it really makes these shells pop. Love the look of them. But functionality wise, these things are amazing. The fact that they are basically a, there's a hole inside them. So you're not sandwiching your frame, a sole plate, and then your shell. Uh, there's a hole. So the frame goes through the sole plate and bolts directly to the bottom of the boot is great. Has great power transfer. It also lowers your ride height quite a bit. And what that's really gonna do and help you out in aggressive skating is it lowers your right, your frame height and your sole plate to the ground. So when you're getting over on grinds and stuff, uh, you can lock grinds easier as well as get boot down. So you got those two points of contact when you're like Royals or you know H block grinds. Really, really love this sole kit. So the next pro, uh, it's gotta be the wheels and bearings. First off, the wheels, these hydrogen wheels. I love hydrogen wheels. They're just one of my favorite all around wheels. And here, again, you know, no surprise. Uh, I love the bullet profile, or the rounded profile of these wheels. They are 
I think the rounded profile really helped me when I was riding flat on these to not catch wheel bite. They really help to kind of get on edge and, and roll into turns. Um, I just really like a nice round um, wheel profile. Uh, the 92A durometer, I was very scared and skeptical of, but they really felt grippy enough um, that of like an 88A usually. Um, just, you know, it didn't feel like I was riding a 92A, uh, but they were really quick because they were so hard. The next thing about the wheels, so you get a full set of eight wheels to ride flat on here, and then you also get um, a set of anti-rockers, which if you want to skate flat, you can skate flat, but if you want to skate antis, you can skate antis. That's awesome. I've never seen a, a skate come with both sets of wheels, so whether you want to skate flat or anti, you can. Uh, and if you do skate anti, the cool thing about this is you really have two sets of wheels going. So, <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna need new wheels for quite some time. And then the bearings, the bearings are Rollerblades ILQ9 classic bearings, which are some of their, you know, high-end amazing bearings. They're super quick and smooth. Um, these are bearings that I roll all the time in my urban skates. So it was really fun pumping bowls uh, and doing airs with these. So for the last pro, um, it's really more of a personal pro uh, coming from my daily driver aggressive skate, which is the M12s. Uh, the M12s don't have a shock absorber in them under the heels. And these new blank skates have one of the best thick, beautiful shock absorbers in uh, aggressive skate. And I just can't tell you how much of a difference that makes coming from something that really doesn't have any shock absorber to a really great shock absorber. You know, it just deadens everything and makes for a really comfortable, great ride in a skate. So that's all the pros. Let's check out the cons. So for the first con, I know you guys have probably heard this all around the internet by now since I'm putting this out late, but these skates are heavy. These are probably the heaviest skates on the market. When you pick these things up out of the box for the first time, you're like, whoa, okay, these are, these are, uh, <laughs> these are weighty. But I wasn't surprised when I picked them up because I'm so used to, I used to skate these solo teams, which are basically the same weight anyways. Um, and I knew once I got on them and got used to them, when you're skating a skate, the weight doesn't technically affect you too much. Yes, it's noticeable, but it's not like it's going to completely throw you off. Um, I do prefer a lighter skate when I'm skating, just because when I'm doing airs and stuff, it just feels that much more nimble when I'm, you know, moving my legs around and stuff, but it's, it's not the end of the world. The next con, uh, this was a big one for me. These things are a pain to get into and out of. So these things have laces on the shell, laces on the liner, a 45 degree Velcro strap, and then a cuffle, bu a cuffle, a cuff buckle. Uh, that's a lot going on in basically the same little area. And it's just a, a rat's nest of straps and laces and all sorts of stuff when you're trying to get these things on. Uh, eh. It was not fun. Um, getting them off is easier, but it just takes long because you got so much stuff to go through to get your foot out. I really enjoy a skate like the M12 with an Intuition lace-up liner um, because all I'm doing is basically put my foot in and I just gotta lace up the liners and then strap the cuff buckle and I'm, I'm going. Um, because the, the, the laces on the shell of those, I don't use, I don't tighten them down. I just, they're just for looks because the shell's so uh, small and narrow, it, it already hugs my foot, which that's what I really like. These, yeah, it's kind of a nightmare. But once you're in them, it's good. Uh, the next con has to be the blank frame. While the blank frame is, you know, a, a very rollable frame, uh, if you're rolling anti-rocker setup, if you're rolling flat on them, it leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, the wheel spacing is quite a bit, pretty classic spacing for a frame, which pulls the two center wheels in and leaves not much space uh, in the H block before you're gonna catch wheel bite. I luckily didn't catch any wheel bite because I was skating round rails mostly, and the round profile of these wheels really helps if you're on edge to not catch the wheel. But, yeah. 
if I was skating uh, angle iron, I bet I'd be catching all over and just not having a great time at all. So you gotta be really good if you wanna skate flat um, and uh, be grinding with these. So the next two cons are really more of a personal con for me uh, and the way I like my skate or the way they fit. Um, this might not be, it's not really a con against the skate. It's just something I wanted to bring up. So the first one is these skates are really more of a medium to wide um, shell for a foot. They also have a more full volume in the forefoot. In the forefoot, I couldn't get it tight enough to the point where I felt pressure on everywhere on my foot. Um, I, you know, I could move my foot just subtly, just subtly uh, in the shell. And while it's not the end of the world, and I could probably get used to it and skate them like that, it's just not my favorite feeling because it's. I like skating a, a skate that's just ratcheted down on every point of my foot and just feels like the skate is a part of me. Um, this didn't feel that way. So that's one. The second con that's personal to me is the way these skate. These are um, what you would call a flat sole or base on these, uh, which is pretty typical in aggressive skate, UFS skate. Um, they're going to be flat, whereas an urban skate or a more classic boot design um, like the M12 has a, what's called a raised heel. Um, and what that's doing is when you put your foot into a raised heel, you're kind of, you're, you're leaning, got a forward lean to it. Uh, and that's what I'm really used to skating a lot of urban and, and most of my aggressives on the uh, M12s. So coming to a flat sole really, it really throws me off when I'm skating. I mean, just skating around on a flat surface with these, I like kept feeling like I was falling backwards on my heels because I didn't have that forward lean that I'm used to. That just felt like, you know, when it's flat, it feels like it's falling backwards. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of people really do enjoy a flat boot, which a lot of aggressive skates are. Um, I'm just, more of a fan of the classic inline skate boot shell design that gives you that forward lane. Those are the cons. Let's check out who these skates are for. I would say these skates are for any aggressive skater from beginner to expert uh, with a medium to wide foot. I, I really think these are going to be a great beginner skate if you have the cash for it because the way the sole kit sits low on the frame and how wide that sole kit is, is really great for locking grinds, uh, as well as learning how to get over without having to push and lean so far down to get boot down on say Royales and, and H-block tricks like that. I think that's a huge plus. Um, I used to put push a lot of people towards the Aeons because of that reason, um, beginners, but these skates, felt very similar to that in terms of the ratio of height to width of that sole kit. So who are these skates not for? Like I just said, uh, not for the, the narrow foot person, um, but I think you could totally roll these if uh, you understand they're not gonna be the most form-fitting boot on the market. So my final thoughts on these. I think Rollerblade has perfected uh, the solo teams with these. All the the additions and the design changes they've made to these skates have really brought these into uh, the next generation, and they're they're a solid skate. They have lots of great features, uh, high quality. It's a great um, aggressive skate. Uh, they did skate a lot like the old solo teams. Not surprised with that, you know, they are the same shell. Um, but uh, some of these extra features, uh, like that sole kit, I really, really enjoyed. I really, really wanted to love these skates and make these my 2022 aggressive skate, you know, daily drivers. But those two personal cons for me, at this point, I don't think I can completely just say, yeah, these are the ones I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep rolling these all the time. Uh, because, you know, I just love that, that, that there's just that subtlety in the, in the forward lean and that, that fit that I yearn for, but I'm not going to give up on these quite yet. What I'm going to do is, um, put a new insole in, which, oh, I didn't talk about the insole. The insole is great in these. 
Um, but I'm gonna have an insole with a little bit more um, pad so that I can suck up some of that volume as well as a bit more wedge um, in the heel so that I can get that forward lean a bit more in these skates. On top of that, I'm planning to put my wish frames on here so that, you know, I'm not amazing at aggressive skating and I need all the uh, help I can get with locking grinds and not getting wheel bites. So uh, the, the wish frames will be going on. If you guys are interested in seeing what I think about these skates after I do those quick little modifications on them, stay tuned on this channel. I'm going to be skating these in the fu uh, near future uh, with those modifications and uh, I'll let you know what I think. But in the end, if you guys are looking for a feature rich, high quality, aggressive skate, and you have a wide, medium to wide foot, I think these skates could be a great option for you. Like I always say, if you guys are interested in the skate, make sure you measure your foot and then you follow their sizing chart and try to get the boot size as close to your foot size as possible. I think that's gonna do it guys. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, again, comments below. I'm happy to answer any questions all the time. If you guys enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you ring that bell so you miss any of these uploads. And until next time, guys, just keep rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah.